Hi, my name is Ray Khan and thanks for joining me today on the technical sharing for Middle Voltage Switchgear and its journey towards digitization and the compliance with the Singapore Power Grid Handbook. This book emphasizes on the procedure requirement for application of electricity in Singapore Power Grid. The objective of today's sharing is to share with you the technology towards uh, switchgear safety, prevent unnecessary downtime in operational design, and the objective is to make the workplace a safer place to work with. I come with uh, 20 years of experience in uh, LB voltage the offers with uh, search protections, uh, control automations, the, um, building monitoring systems, and also a good experience in the lightning protection. Have delivered uh, the SS555 Singapore Lightning Protection Code as well as the SS638 Singapore Electrical Installation Standards. So, today I'll be sharing with you uh, towards the Singapore medium voltage offers and requirement from Singapore Power Grid. Yes, so the, how the, we'll be running today's uh, session is that, oops, sorry, just allow me to switch over to the pitch. Okay, so um, how we'll be running today's content will be like this, uh, will be a 60 minute session. So uh, in this 60 minute that uh, we will cover um, the medium voltage uh, switch gear evolution, then we can talk about um, the EIS, the air insulated switch gear, the gas insulated switch gear, followed by the um, zooming into the 22 kV applications. Then we will touch on also in terms of the calculations and also some of the aspects uh, that was being raised uh, at the early stage uh, of this arrangement of the training as well. And then uh, we will go into um, the digital features of the MV switch gear. And then after that, we will go into a QA. and a uh, That is where uh, I will also get my uh, colleague uh, help to answer some of the uh, difficult questions. All right, so very quickly, we will start the session. So um, over in here, the, uh, it's a very simple page. It showcase about um, our manufacturing facilities for our switch gear. Actually, covers uh, in three locations in the world. Uh, on the left, you see Spain. The center is in Germany, and also on the right, we see um, China. So uh, pretty much of showcasing this is to um, share with our client that uh, we have the manufacturing facilities. Um, to serve our client as well uh, in terms of lead time and also in technical support. And uh, most of the time we deal uh, very closely with our German factory. The, um, the exact spot is actually in Regensburg. That is, that is where uh, area where we actually um, have the production of our switch gear. Okay, so uh, this page uh, talks about uh, quickly in terms of the, the HV to MV distribution. Uh, we actually step down of the switch gear. Um, actually goes out to the end user LV portion as well. All right. So the over in here is that uh, it actually goes into the um, primary uh, distributions that usage of about 22 kV. Uh, sometimes it can be as high as uh, 40 kV. So the, from the primary distribution, it actually provides. Uh, it can also provide power directly to the uh, end customers or the customer substation. And then from the primary substation and certain projects, we actually branch down into the secondary uh, distributions. All right, so, and then from the secondary distributions, um, that is where sometimes we could, we get to see some of the requests for the RMU deployment. Um, well, RMU is uh, suitable uh, for current rating, which is much lower, the port rating and um, also the control scheme are also much more uh, simpler uh, at this portion for the RMU. So the, once it goes into the, um, the final distributions, and then that's where the, uh, we could add up at the uh, LV and user substation as well. All right. So the, um, just to share the, in terms of uh, the primary distribution, the most of the time for switch gears uh, that has been uh, deployed are mostly the air insulated switch gear uh, and also the gas insulated switch gear. Uh, reason why the, they are being chosen is because of the higher the fault rating that they are able to withstand and also their protection scheme are actually much more complex itself. Now, for those who are generally new to switch gear, just to give an overview of uh, what this uh, switch gears is about. 
Um, generally, it's a large um, circuit breaker the, and also an isolator. The, what it does, um, second in objective, is that it's able to the design to switch off the power so the allows works to be carried out the, at the downstream. So um, generally, the, the one of the key aspects is that uh, it's been the designed to clear faults as well. So that is why it comes with components, as you can see in here, the um, circuit breaker to control and also to isolate the electrical equipment and use to de-energize equipment itself. Okay, so uh, over in here comes with a very uh, the interesting chart that talks about the positioning rating of the switch gear. So um, if I were to start with the x-axis of this portion, all right, so it focuses on the KV rating of the 11 KV. The, it goes all the way up to the 40 KV. So you can see the progression in here. The progression ranges from the GMA, which is a 1,250M, to GMAE that goes up to a slightly higher rating of about 2,500M. And so as we progress to the right-hand side, you can see the KV rating start to uh, incline into 36 KV. All right, so we have a different model in here, which is the WSA and also WSB series itself. Okay, so the moving here, you can see the picture a little bit uh, clearly. The, um, you can see even as we go into the GHA, the number of bars bar that we have here, an option where we can go for a double bars bar option. All right, so the, the double bars bar options are commonly being called for, especially in critical applications, the, like um, data centers or hospital. All right, so data centers a lot of time, uh, the amperage can go up to 2,500M. So double bus bar will be a good choice in here. All right, so that way it can actually give the certain redundancy in terms of uh, the uh, power design, okay? Now, um, as it goes into much more higher critical facilities, example like um, oil and gas or um, some military sectors where they cannot afford downtime, um, we do have a much higher performance, which is called the GHA series. Um, this is a um, double gas compartment series. The, you can see that the KV rating is actually quite high, can go up to 40, 40 KV. And also the, um, the trip status can here, you can see it's uh, 40.53 seconds, all right? So the, um, in terms of uh, Singapore itself, when it comes to uh, the common deployment, like example in power grid, or the uh, LTA, the, um, the WSA model has been uh, widely adopted. So w, the, um, the WS the model has a two gas tank compartment version, right? So these are just some of the insights of the, um, the different models that we have in Schneider. Now, um, over in here, we talk about some of the evolutions. So as the factories, the, they start to develop um, Newer technologies. There actually says uh, there's an origin. So we talk a bit, a little bit of the history itself. So you can see in here, it started actually from the um, 30s, the 1930s, where the um, air insulated switch gear is actually the, on the uh, open concept. So the, they are actually using an open air concept, sorry, as a switch gear. And then once it goes into some uh, innovation design, which we call the evolutions, there are some key factors that take into place, right? So the, uh, the designers are constantly looking into how to redesign to give a better service continuity, the better safety, make it a footprint much more smaller, the, um, the goal, how to make it much more cost uh, effective and also more greener. So based on all these uh, factors, that's why you can see it start to evolve along the ways from the 50s to the 80s, where they still uh, um, revolving around the air insulated um, switch gears. But as it goes into starting, especially on the 80s to 90s, that's where the gas insulated switch gears start to come um, into the picture, right? So for gas insulated switch gear, the generally is that they are using a lot the, of the vacuum and the SF6 options. All right, so the um, general, uh, one of the key factors is that uh, in the air insulated switch gear, um, there's uh, one good features as well. 
uh, about, um, you can see in here about the withdrawable circuit breaker, where you can actually draw out the, the circuit breaker uh, to a place for maintenance. But uh, uh, in event of this drawing out, also uh, introduced into certain um, issues as well, because uh, for a draw out feature, there's actually more mechanism in place. So example, the, there'll be connectors issues where they develop weak links. So that is why the, in terms of uh, safety and also continuity, the designers actually came out with a much more um, robust and also the, the much more safer feature where we actually house the circuit breaker the, in the tank itself that's fully suited. So the, that in a way will eliminate the, um, the requirement of drawing out the circuit breaker. All right. So in a way, there are certain benefits moving into the gas, the, the technology, the gas insulated technology. The, the one of the key factors is that uh, you minimize downtime because uh, maintenance has been um, largely reduced. OK, of course, it goes into the um, 2010. Um, there's also the SS um, IS series, which is the shooter solid insulated switch gear has been um, introduced into the market as well. So later on, I will also do a quick sharing in some of these series. So I mean, this like in here just to break down into um, the key components in every switch gear. All right. So uh, over at the, the top portion that we have uh, one of the key criteria on the left in here, which is to achieve uh, the insulating distance. All right. So the, for insulating distance, so what we have to do, the, we need to form a form of isolations. So how can isolation be formed is via the switch, this connector, and also the uh, circuit breaker in here. Now, uh, in one, the second criteria for a switch gear is that you must be able to make or break the circuit under normal condition. All right. So by doing this make or break, you also requires um, in terms of a switch uh, features in here. So the switch features in here is that um, you can actually have, you will require a switch disconnector and also a contactor in here. Now, in the event when there's a fault, so in the fault itself, generally the whole key purpose of the switch gear is to clear the fault, right? So in order to clear the fault, there requires a few key components. So one of it is the withdrawable or the fixed type circuit breaker, or you use a fuse, all right? to actually uh, deploy this feature. And last of all is that um, to discharge the charges of the making capacity, it requires them to do erding. Okay, so for erding wise itself, it requires the erding switch. All right, so these are pretty much just a run through of the different components um, in a switch gear. So um, this slide in here, uh, just to very quickly uh, go through uh, the different models of uh, air insulated switch gear that we have from Schneider, you can see a very wide range with different uh, rated voltage. All right, so actually based on different applications, uh, if the customer has a preference for air insulated switch gear, we will look uh, into the rated voltage and also the rated current, and then we will propose um, a more suitable uh, model to actually uh, fulfill their requirement. Now, um, likewise, if the customer uh, call for a gas insulated switch gear, there could be a certain reason uh, that um, could be space saving. All right, then um, the gas insulated switch gear might come into the picture. So these are the different model. The most common model that uh, currently the Schneider has been proposing um, day in day out, uh, mostly the GHA and also the GMA. So GHA. Uh, over in here is uh, comes with the, the double compartment, all right, gas compartment, and GMA come with the, the single the gas compartment itself. Okay, so the, just a quick run through as well uh, on the, the GHX series, and also on the right we have the WS series. So the WS series, the rated voltage in here is at 36 kV, where the GHA series can go much higher. So that uh, 40.5, all right. So we do have a few options, but this will also uh, be in a certain um, impacts in terms of the pricing as well, okay. So um, um, allow me just to start with the introduction of the air insulated switch gear, all right. So the air insulated switch gear, 
um, this is a breakdown view. So you actually give the audience a much more clearer picture of how um, the insulated switch gear has been um, segregated. It, first of all, it comes with compartments, all right, the different compartments in here. So uh, all in all, total, there's uh, four compartments that is uh, fully segregated with uh, metallic partitions, all right? So the, and the insulation is purely using air uh, as the insulation. So um, over in here is that the, um, on the, the, this part will be called the bus bar compartment, which is green in color. The, um, the yellow in portion in here will be the circuit breaker compartment. All right, so the, it, the table in here, you can see that is with the withdrawable. All right, so what it does is that you can actually withdraw the um, circuit breaker that to a safe location, and then you can do your maintenance. The orange portion is the low voltage compartment at the top, all right, and then also the blue compartment in here is the cable entry compartment. Now, the, um, for air insulated switch gear, you will come with a very distinctive design, which is called the automatic shutters, all right. So these are uh, shutter systems, what it does is that uh, when you actually uh, draw out the circuit breaker, the shutter is actually automatically closed itself. Now, um, also just to share in terms of the some of the designs that we see, sometimes we see there's a mixture of specs where the gas uh, insulated design, uh, they put in the statement of uh, automatic shutters, which is uh, not appropriate, all right, because uh, automated shutters is one of the feature that's designed for the, the air insulated um, switch gear, all right. So the, um, also apart from this is that uh, we talk about the the, um, the service continuity for the switch gear, which is LSC to B. All right. So the, these are certain the requirement in the IEC 2271-200 itself. So it's actually a test uh, procedure. All right. So likewise, in this test procedure, we will talk about the the um, partitioning as well. So the partitioning for PM actually refers to it is metallic insulation. All right. So um, LSC, what does LSC means? LSC means actually is for the loss of service continuity. So there's a few category in here. Uh, there's uh, LSC um, 1, 2, 2A and 2B. So um, this one talks about uh, in terms of how they actually do the segregation of the compartment the location of your bus bar and also of your uh, uh, earning switch and etc. as well. Okay, so uh, over in here, just do a very quick uh, intro that we have the um, solid student switch gear, which is called the PREM set. Uh, that's the one on the right in here. So below in here, it talks about the rated voltage also as the, um, the rated current, right? So uh, it looks like this for our solid uh, shielded uh, insulation uh, system. So um, this uh, model has been designed, reason why is because they observed that, especially for the air insulated switch gear, there are certain problems in there. The, um, there are actually possibility of arcing. So that is why the, um, the SSIS model was being designed. So um, these are some photos they taken from an EIS model. The pretty much is on the left, it shows a sign of um, ionization. So there's a white stains on the left that's, that's been formed by ionization in here. So the picture shows of the insulation material supporting the bus bar. The insulation is um, commonly at the top of the circuit breaker. The bus bar is mounted on the top of this uh, insulation. So it has basically two functions. So one function is to support the bus bar. Of course, the second function um, is to act as insulation, where the insulation is there. Now, since there's insulation, then why does ionization occur? Reason why is because the, the current is trying to reach to the metal structure on the panel itself. So that is why you can see the white stain in here. Now, if all these issues is not um, resolved, you will start to progress into the second stage. Second stage you can see is called a triple point. A triple point comprises of the the conductor, the air and insulator, where they actually come into play. And then this where the ionization start to get more serious, we call it carbon staining, right? So you can see that the stains start to form a very thick layer on top of the, or these joints itself. 
If it's not further rectified, that is where the dangerous arcing will occur. So you can see here we have this uh, tracking stain that's actually occur. So all these that take place from the erosion um, of the uh, insulation itself. So these are actually pretty dangerous because uh, from here you can actually, this are actually already formation of the uh, flashover which starts to take place. All right, so um, the flashover can cause a lot of uh, issues like uh, internal arc fault, which can result to fire explosion. And also it can cause um, other issues like the uh, short circuit and earth fault. All right. So um, this slide uh, pretty much is a uh, um, progression slides. So just to very quickly go through, um, there's a few key components, especially the, in our region in Singapore, we have a lot of humidity uh, where the, the switch gear actually experience and also a lot of time uh, of the temperature variations itself. And that is where the, we cause condensations then also in here where water droplets starts to form. Now, um, also once it comes into the electrical stress, uh, especially coming from the switch gear, that is where our corona discharge is actually being um, uh, issued out. And then um, that will actually lead to the lateral chemical uh, erosions. All right. So you um, can see in here of the chemical term of HNO3. So um, this actually comes in um, a lot. The, uh, also, when it comes in uh, contact of buildup in terms of um, the SO2, SO2 are uh, the the um, sulfur dioxide that's been produced from the uh, uh, corrosion process. So um, along the, the period of time when um, dust start to accumulate inside the panel because due to um, insulation, uh, it's actually making use of the ambient air. The buildup of this dust will also cause the, um, this issue where you actually cause the loss of the hydrophobicity. So what does it mean is that uh, for hydrophobicity is that the insulation will start to, it will cause the insulation to wear off, all right? So at a much more faster rate. So once the insulation wear, uh, wear off, there'll be a, a rise of uh, certain issues where the ability to repel water is not there anymore, all right? So there'll be a uh, water pouring uh, on the surface layer, and then this will lead to um, issues where um, there is uh, trackings and also corrosions which starts to take place. And then once it get more serious, it will start to form treeing like the photo you saw earlier. And then there'll be one day, there'll be a flashover. Okay. So um, this is why uh, to eliminate this um, issue, um, on the right, uh, they start to um, do a comparison between having a shoe, all right, concept versus the one concept like an uh, insulated switch gear that doesn't come with the shielding. So the all in all is that uh, it's just like a cable concept. So once the cable has a screen and insulation intact, the, um, they apply this concept into the um, SSIS with a metallic coating uh, to form a layer of shielding. And with this technology, the, um, the SSIS can actually be submerged all right, so um, with the um, metal shooting as well, it goes on the zero volt concept, all right? So what it does is that it brings the votes to ground as well, okay? So the, um, basically the, on the right, you can see the, once it doesn't have the um, shooting, you can see the, the electrical field that's been actually permeated uh, into the ambient um, environment. And then this is where there's potential of uh, arcing to actually take place, right? So in a way, by having a shoe, the dose is simple, but it does actually uh, bring a lot of uh, safety features uh, for the customer. Okay, so the, um, over in here, show, it shows uh, some of the uh, basic features, like for instance, the uh, SSIS, the PREM set, is actually using the three position scheme. All right, so uh, on here you can see it's a closed position. And then in position two, uh, we have the breaker actually opened. And then also the line um, connector uh, that's actually intact. And then also the, on the position three itself, you can see that the breaker open as well, the earning switch has actually been um, open as well. All right, so uh, this gives a summary in terms of what it means 
for a uh, three position um, scheme. Okay, so apart from this, they have uh, other components like the low bit switch for the circuit breaker that that's um, being used in the prem set. It has the integrated uh, metering units and also the, with the CTs and BTs that's in place. Okay, so this uh, picture just uh, just to show, they actually go through a very extreme test uh, stage itself uh, to a point where they actually expect the prem set to be uh, powered up and then being submerged underwater. And when the submersion takes place, you expect the prem set to be fully operational as well. Okay. All right, so the, what you can see in here is a 17.5 kV, the, the test that's actually been um, issued out on this uh, unit itself. Okay, so with next, I will go into the gas insulated switch gear. So what is a gas insulated switch gear? So generally the points are written in here. The switch gear that incorporate gas typically SF6 uh, at a higher uh, ambient pressure, the, um, as it uses as an insulator medium for uh, the alternating current above 1 kV. So the, the switch gears are comprises of circuit breaker, switch, pushing, the, um, the, the buses instruments, and also the cable terminations uh, of all these basic requirements in here. Right. So the generally is that for SF6 gears, the, um, they have some key properties. So the gas actually for the SF6 have been pressurized and they have all these properties as it's uh, five times heavier than normal air. You have a very good um, the dielectric strength, high dielectric strength compared to air as well. So all in all, the key purpose of this is that um, to actually act as a very good form of insulation. Um, also, uh, the ability for SF6 to extinguish when the arc occurs and also uh, in events uh, when heating occurs, you have very good cooling uh, capabilities for SF6 gas, all right? So where the SF6 gas is actually housed, it's actually housed in this um, the compartment in here uh, where it is fully sealed, all right? Or they call it hermetically sealed. And this sealing is actually being tested in factory, all right? So in a way, this uh, gives the users uh, predictive maintenance, all right? So it also, by having it fully sealed, um, it actually minimize the possibility of gas leakage um, unless the, the tank has been damaged by users, else generally um, the possibility of leakage is very, very low. The robustness of the tank, so in a way, so because of the, the weather shielding as well, it also prevent um, corrosion to take place, right? So, and also you have the insulation with shielding uh, within the tank as well. All right, so uh, I think one of the very common question that uh, comes in when people talk about the gas insulated switch gear um, is a lot on the gas, uh, the topping up of the gas. So um, the, just take note that the gas topping up method is depending on the design of the switch gear. So for example, for a double gas tank, the, the topping up uh, of the switch gear is uh, on the, the per compartment, all right, basics. All right, so the, for example, in here you can see a common gas tank, all right. So the common gas tank basically have the bus bar and the circuit breaker, if you can see the, on the picture in here, it's all housed the, in a compartment. Okay, so the, for the, the um, gas insulated switch gear, usually there'll be um, a gas indicator. So the gas indicator, the, um, like in here for the GMA series, the, we actually have a gauge. So the gauge comes with three colors. So the, the one um, in green, generally the points that is healthy, and then the, um, pretty much the rated pressure should uh, maintain at um, 0.03 MPA. But uh, assuming that there's a leakage itself, uh, it's depending on the rate of the leak, the, you should generally go into this 0 0.02, which is the yellow uh, region. And once it goes into the yellow zone itself, there are certain actions that need to be in place where the, um, we actually recommend the, um, to top up the gas and observe if the gas continue to leak. If yes, then we will recommend immediate shutdown. 
but if you assuming that the gas is leaking out too fast, it goes into the red zone, then uh, we recommend the um, the switch gear to be shut down immediately. So um, this is a GMA series where it's using a gauge. We have another model of a higher end. Um, this is using the IDIS series, which is the LED lights. Okay, so the, um, you can see in here of uh, GMA. So the, you can see here is the breakdown of the, the GMA the model in here. So the, generally is that the, what I have uh, on here is that I think one of the very um, interesting questions, especially on the uh, switch gear VTs. All right, so the VT is actually located um, at the bottom. So you can see there's a shelf that goes in. So the, they actually have in contact. All right, so the, why the, the indication of in here is just to show that how is it it is to disconnect the, the VTs, the voltage transformer. So and also we also see of some of the VTs design, the customers uh, prefer to house it outside the panel. Uh, but our recommendation is to have it the, the together with the switch gear itself because this in a way because uh, when it comes from the factories it comes to together with the switch gear and everything is tested as one itself. All right. So the, lastly is that uh, the SF6 gas uh, which is uh, the, um, in the panel. All right. So SF6 gas is the, the not only in the breaker but it's also in the bus bus system. So it's called the sulfur hexafluoride. So it acts as a main form of insulation, right? So to actually uh, protect uh, this equipment. So the, this in a way, since everything has been housed inside a tank itself, the, you can see the text in here. So the, the gas insulated switch gear is designed um, not to fail and also the Therefore, that you don't really require maintenance itself. Now, the, um, I think one of the very common uh, uh, interesting questions is that when we do a panel expansion, so this is how usually it's been done. Um, there'll be a box at the top. So the box eventually will be filled with the SF6 gas. All right, so we call it the bus bar cap, uh, coupling tank itself. All right, so the, the one in the, the center, this picture will give us a clearer picture where you actually joins the adjacent panels um, to the main panel itself. So the, you will see that the main bus bar and the bus bar connection link the, between the panel the, to be housed inside this uh, pressurized uh, SF6 gas. So uh, this feature provide users um, good service uh, continuity the, um, in a way which also helps in terms of the predictive maintenance. So the fully SF6 uh, gas insulated bus bar, the, um, what it does is that um, on the on the left module itself, what it does, it can actually uh, draw vacuum. So once the process uh, of draw vacuum takes place, you will remove the moisture and also the dust particle. So once the, the, the vacuum is fully created inside the box itself, and um, then we can see there's a plunger. The plunger will then open, allowing the gas, the SF6 gas, to fill up into the box. Right, so that's where you can see the two colors uh, in, as an indication of the SF6 gas. Right, so it shows the simplicity um, of the um, in terms of installing this uh, box itself for panel expansion. Um, also, one of the thing is uh, very common in terms of the plating of the bus bar. So the plating of the bus bar is uh, silver plated. So uh, in a way, why silver plating is to uh, remove these uh, oxidization issues. All right. So and also in terms of the, the bus bar, there's uh, the insulation content as well. OK, so uh, over in here, it talks about um, the VTs, so the voltage uh, transformers. So the picture on the left, uh, the VT is actually housed in the stainless steel enclosure. So why stainless steel? Because it gives a zero uh, potential, which is uh, safe to touch. And the VT is a plug-in type. And um, 
importantly of all, this VT is tap tested together with the panel, with the switch gear, with no external cables. All right, so the, um, this actually reduces a lot of risk uh, in terms of the workmanship and also the, in terms of the termination. All right, so the VT can also be isolated. Um, using a isolating switch for safety operation and also uh, for maintenance. So that in a way that switch gear together with the VTs uh, being fully delivered to the client uh, in terms of warranty issues is all also uh, well covered as well. All right. So I think one of the very common questions is in the, um, the VTs with the integrated uh, primary fuse. Uh, once it's damaged, the, the um, do we change the whole VT? Well, uh, I would say the answer is yes, because uh, for the fuse uh, that which is actually located inside the VT itself, the, um, what is once the fuse uh, blow, the pretty much um, the, the root effects or the cause of the effects is actually a lot of times come from the winding, and the winding actually is uh, residing in the VT, right? So a lot of time when the fuse blow. It means that the VTs is actually having issue as well. So that is why our recommendation is to have the box uh, change as well. OK. All right, so um, here the, this slide talks about the beauty of the switch gear in the modular concept. So the modular concept actually enables uh, good service continuity. So the, um, this in a way minimize uh, downtime. All right, so uh, for the um, panel, uh, you can see in here the panel, uh, there's uh, panel A, panel B, which has been drawn out, and then there's panel C in here. So uh, you can actually um, don't uh, shift panel A and C, and you can actually draw out panel B. But after drawing out, what it does is that you can have a bridging bus bar in here. All right, so once the bridging bus bar is installed, it can power up, the corporation can actually continue to uh, run itself. So um, this cable up concept is actually one of the features from our uh, GIS, which actually makes the downtime um, right to the minimum itself. OK. So uh, over in here, this slide uh, shows about the um, how small the footprint of the GMA is. So as an example of a front view of the model of the GMA, the, um, for 630 amp, the width is only 600 mm, right? So of course, we also have to factor in the end walls. The end walls is 40 mm, all right, on both ends. So adding both sides, it will be 80 uh, mm, all right? So for the bus couple compartments, once it goes up to higher, like uh, 1,250 mm, the width will be uh, much wider as well, 1,250. OK, the, apart from this is that uh, from the uh, cable uh, compartment, the cable connection area. So having a larger space is actually much more better. The reason why is because uh, it's very it's much more uh, convenient for the uh, cable jointers. All right, so a, cable, a single cable pushing can cater up to three cables, all right, or three phase cable. Uh, but the, usually the, the maximum dimension is about 300 mm squared. All right. So by catering this uh, a space of uh, 680, that uh, give the, the um, cable joiners much more um, room to actually do a proper termination, which is uh, actually much more safer at the end of the day. So this slide uh, in here talks about the dimensioning and clearance uh, of the uh, GMA. All right, so it talks about the, the footprint and also if it's on a race flow, the, what is the recommended height of the race flow if it's uh, at the rear uh, access. Of course, uh, this uh, switch gear can be moved to uh, against um, to the wall. All right, even for the rear, the rear of the the side of the switch gear can be pushed to the um, side of the wall as well. But of course, the the consequence is that uh, once it's been pushed to the end of the, the side of the wall, that extension is not possible um, at the later end. The, um, I think one key point to highlight is that uh, when we put the rear to the wall itself, we still need to give some spacing about uh, 100 mm in space once it's uh, 
on the wall. And also, uh, we need to take note that, uh, especially for the recent uh, SS code for SS uh, 6, 6 Street, it talks about the minimum clearance at the front is about 700 mm around the panel. Right. Also, take note of the height as well. So the, the height here is uh, 2,100 mm. All right. So you need some uh, top clearance as well, um, around 300, 300 mm. Okay. So the in terms of these uh, the cable connections, so the cable connections uh, come with uh, three cable CONs. All right. So it shows in here shows. Uh, inner cone um, together uh, with an outer cone concept. So uh, pretty much you can actually uh, look into how much uh, space saving can can give the, the pretty the working on the piggyback uh, concept itself. So you can actually have an inner cone and an outer cone, which are his safe space. Uh, you can see the, there's a ray cam in here. So the, pretty much the, these cones can actually get the users to party as well. All right, so uh, all the NKT cables, all right? So the way this slide the shows about the, the three types of uh, cable connections. The one on the left uh, shows a single cable uh, joint uh, per phase application. The one on the extreme right talks, uh, shows case about uh, double cable connections in here. So. And then the one in the center is the one that comes with the search protections. Right, so just some side photos. Okay, so the, um, I think one of the key uh, concern, especially when it comes to consultant uh, designs, doesn't come with race flow. All right, so the GMA, uh, especially for this model, the, the is a bottom entry design. So. But there are certain um, additional um, features that we can choose, for, um, which we need to um, inform the factory that, that we can actually uh, to come out a real design. All right, the real design. So once the real design, the cones will be mounted uh, at the back. So um, once it's uh, at the back, you can actually do from a top entry. Okay. So the, in this uh, rear design, you can see in here the, for the GMA series. All right. So the uh, cable, the cable termination tools, the, the users are very uh, standard tool. They're using this uh, dead lock uh, elbow connection, which is easier to terminate. All right. And uh, apart from this, is that uh, in terms of the termination time, is also much more uh, faster. Right, so the over in here also see that there's a VT. So the VT is at the rear. We have uh, at the front and at the rear as well. Okay, so is that depending on the, the user preference? Okay, so this picture you can see it uh, is at the rear uh, of the, the which give the users a rear access. OK, so the, also we have the VT at the top. So the commonly the, the one is at the top is for the bus bar. The, this slide shows uh, if an event when your projects requires a cable from the top, the, you need to cater a space, the a spacing of 500 mm in depth. Right, so the, how it does is actually quite simple. They actually put in this the panel plates to cover up, and then it enables the cable to come down from the top in here. So once it's done up, it will look like this for a re-entry design. All right, so the, um, what we've seen earlier uh, is a single compartment, and this one just gives the uh, overview in terms of a double compartment uh, GIS. So the, the double compartment, pretty much what I have is the LV compartment in here, and then there's a bus bar compartment that's actually um, separated itself, and then also there'll be a circuit breaker compartment, and also there'll be a cable entry compartment in here. Okay, so the, in a way to have all these uh, in the SF6 gas, again, is uh, maintenance free. So it's a gas filled compartment made of this uh, nickel, chromium nickel steel. All right, so it's leak proof for the entire uh, service life. 
Okay, so I think one of the key best uh, benefits you have is that there's no gas work site that's actually needed. All right, so uh, no gas handling is what they call it. All right, even for installation or future uh, panel extension or panel replacement. So the, for the, the um, GHA model, which is the double gas tank, the, um, it comes with a display which is called the IDIS, which is the gas status. All right, so the green indicate that it's working fine. The, um, yellow is a pre-warning alarm. And then after this, this red, once it goes into red, there'll be a uh, um, main warning. Main warning. So, so it comes with a pressure sensor is mounted the, um, on the self-locking disposal connector. All right. So the, over in here, the, pretty much these are the key the important features of a GHA. The, they focus in terms of to give a client the easy replacement concept. So within about four to five, five hours, you can have the, your uh, replacement to be done. And uh, most importantly of all, um, it doesn't require a gas work um, aside. So the second here, you can see that it's a maintenance free compartment. So all the uh, high voltage components are installed in the compartment and it's fully gas filled. All right, so um, the gas tank is made of uh, chromium nickel steel. All right, so they've also been tested accordance to the IEC 62271. So that which means it's been leak proof. All right, so the replenishing of gas uh, is not needed unless the tank is damaged. All right, so the, on the right end here, you can see there's uh, no bus bar, no, uh, no gas work excite via the uh, B-link for the bus bar joint. So the, um, for the additional of the adjacent panel has been made um, easier, especially for extension. All right. So what it does is that uh, we actually have the connection uh, of the bus bar done via this uh, B-link system. Right, so the billing doesn't require any maintenance uh, and it works on the IP65 system. So the billing has also been tested as well up to 40 kV in the BIL uh, 185 kV uh, test requirement. Now, um, there's also a lot of uh, question in terms of the, the, the switching between the single gas tank and the double gas tank. Now, um, allow me to explain a little bit in here. So the GMA single gas tank works on the two position switch. The GHA double gas tank works on a three position switch. So what is the difference in here? So the, um, the three position switch operates on the on, off and off concept in here. All right, so whereas the two position switch works on the on off. So the on off is done so where the earning is done through a separate spring loaded earning switch, uh, with, uh, which is being achieved also through the uh, mechanical interlock itself. All right, so generally, step one is that the circuit breaker opened. Then, what happened next is that the isolator opened. And then, after that, once the isolator opened, uh, is that the earning switch will be switched on. And then, after that, it's being connected to Earth. So just to share, in terms of both technology is uh, being tested according to IEC standards, and the IEC standards don't specify that generally be that it must be a, a two position or three position switch because these two concepts is uh, being tested and accepted by the IEC uh, six two two seven one. All right. So the, that is why in here for the bus bar disconnecting uh, system. So they have statement in here that it points for a three position switch. And we also uh, recommend as well, the concept of having a statement in here for alternative design such isolator and earning switch uh, can be uh, individually provided. All right, so example where the earning is file, quick acting making switch instead of through the circuit breaker. All right, so this gives uh, option for the two position switch as well. All right, so the two position switch has been tested also. The, um, the based on the fault making capacity of a 25 kA uh, three second. Right. 
So inside the GHA, uh, we actually use the circuit breaker. Uh, a lot of time we hear of it as the vacuum circuit breaker. So the vacuum circuit breaker is also gas filled. So and that in a way they are not accessible for uh, maintenance, right? So the gas circuit breakers actually uses the uh, SF6 gas for insulation, all right? And um, but uh, that would will be require certain design to interrupt the arc. Now the arc interruption is actually done using the um, the design of the uh, vacuum interrupting uh, chamber. All right, so the vacuum interrupting chamber is being constructed using a, a material called a chromium alloy. All right, so uh, what it does is that it uses a ceramic cylinder. Right, why ceramic cylinder is the, the purpose of it is to prevent a condensation from taking place. Right, so the and also the vapors are easily created because when they during the switching, the vapors can actually have been created as well. So the, when the vacuum integrator switching switches on and off, the arc plasma are being created as well, right? So the, that is why we have this technology called the AMF, which is the exomagnetic field, the, which is a Schneider technology. The, what it does is being designed in a way to equalize and diffuse the arc, right? So this talks about a simple overview in terms of the, the um, the vacuum circuit breaker. Right, so uh, this one just talks about the inner cones and the outer cones. Right, so it talks about um, the versatile cable connections that you have, like a type C bushing, um, a T shaped connectors that up to, which can be used up to 40.5 kV and can be cable up to uh, 800 um, mm. Okay, so uh, over here it shows in terms of the, the toroidal uh, call, the CT of the transformer. All right, so the, um, it's, been, uh, it's been designed and mounted inside the uh, panel. So uh, the CTs are usually designed with a cast free racing. Why cast free racing is because uh, it's been designed to relieve the dielectric stress. All right, so the CT is also the that it's been designed outside uh, of the gas field compartment. So the reason why it's been outside is for the uh, cable termination system. The, um, the CTs have been manufactured also from uh, the Schneider factory as well. Right. Okay, so this slide talks about some of the, the um, maintenance of pass base, passing width that is required for 700 mm. There's uh, in the SS638. Okay, so um, I have actually covered in some of the uh, AIS switch here, the AIS concept. So the in summary is that uh, it requires maintenance. All right, so this gives rise to shutdown time, and also we cover the GIS, the single uh, bus bar and also the double bus bar design as well. So the double bus bar design. All the single bus power that generally for GIS, in short, is that um, is um, maintenance free and uh, is designed not to fail. All right, because the the high voltage components are all housed inside the SF6 gas. So the, in a way, which is a huge benefit in terms of the for the clients in terms of the operating expense. All right. So the the middle the middle model. Uh, this one is our GM set. So the GM set has been uh, obsolete in here, all right? So the, pretty much the focus uh, that we have right now for the market is the GHA and also the GMA series. Okay, so that this picture again talks about the AIS where you have to uh, rack out the switch gear, the redrawable uh, circuit breaker. Right, to a safe location where you can actually do the maintenance. Right, for whereas for GIS, the uh, switch the circuit breaker is cannot be redrawn. Right, so the, the benefit of it, if it uh, cannot be redrawn, means there's no mechanism for 
uh, breaking in and out. This reduces the mechanism. You don't have to do any lubrication or servicing. And also the footprint is also for the gas um, are so much more smaller. Right? Especially when it comes to Singapore design, we are always uh, facing a space issue. Right, so there's this one chart uh, is taken from the IEEE 493 Go Book. All right, so it tells about why, the, what are the benefits for switching from the air insulated switch gear into gas insulator. So you can see by using air, these are the, all the different possibility of failures, like for instance, uh, shorting by external influence, mechanical structure failures, and they actually put down a percentage in here for the IEEE Go Book. But uh, when it comes into gas insulation switch gear, you can see um, all these factors are actually being eliminated. All right, so by adding up, it actually sums up to as high as 50%. All right, so by having the components housed inside the, the sealed SF6 gas, um, it's been um, not possible to be exposed to external influence like dust and moisture and all these things. Right, so a, a additional for this, um, you can see it has a lesser mechanical effort for the gas insulated switch gear. Also, you have uh, fixed components. All right, so um, minimizing the possibilities of uh, um, hot spots. All right. Okay. So and also maintenance is not needed in the uh, MV compartment. Okay. So the with our next just to share very quickly in terms of the key basic difference between the AIS and the GIS. So this is made of uh, filled with insulation with air. Here is the insulation using SF6 gas. The, um, over in here is, uh, they have the redrawable circuit breaker, GIS is fixed. The um, maintenance is uh, regularly required for GIS is not. The, um, the IP compartment is IP, um, IP3X and IP4X. Right, so for GIS is IP65, the IP rating is much more higher. So for those who are not familiar with IP ratings, the, um, the first digit uh, talks about the solid particles, but, um, and then the second digit talks about the water ingress. So you can see in here that for EIS, that there's no water ingress protection, right? There's only solid particles for the first digit. Whereas for GIS, they have both. Right, the footprint is uh, much more smaller for GIS. Uh, just one limitation is that the SF6 gas is not environmental friendly. Okay, so very quickly is that uh, I'll move on into one of the key uh, importance, which is on the standards itself. So um, the standards in here, they talk about the up flash protections. So um, this shows the importance of having a dedicated uh, LV compartment. Um, it also shows how the test is actually being formed itself. So in the event uh, when we have to do a maintenance uh, for the LV components, we don't have to open up the full panel. So um, you can see in here, this is what they do. They, they, uh, for in terms for the testing, they put cotton-like materials around the panel. And then um, there'll be an arcing, and then well, that's where the panel actually blows up. All right, so, but this test is being done when the panel is closed. So what we are trying to say is, is that if you were to open this door, uh, when the panel is live itself, um, we are exposing the person to risk. Even if he's accessing into the low voltage compartment, um, if the model don't have a double door, then that will put him into a lot of danger. All right, so that is why for Schneider Electric, they came up with a dedicated uh, low voltage compartment. So to eliminate uh, the possibility of uh, such uh, danger itself. OK, so the, over in here, it talks about the IEC requirement for 62271. Um, it takes into um, a lot of uh, factors like how is it being manufactured? Uh, also, the, in terms of when there's um, uh, arcing itself, the, um, the FLR, the, the front, the side, the rear uh, for the person standing around it, are they protected itself? So then also the design is that when there's explosion, the, would the door be secured so it doesn't burst open? 
So that is the reason why they actually put the cotton-like material around the, the parameters of the panel when they do uh, this test. They have to, to a point where they have to ensure there's no fragmentation that flies out from the panel. All right. Okay. So um, you can see in here. So using um, the, the high-speed camera, you can see that the flames actually um, goes up the big point, you actually push the, um, the fire upwards itself. So this one uh, focus more into the, F the FLR requirement. So the front, the side, the rear. So the whole ob uh, objective in here is that when they do the arc test, they need to ensure that the fore side of the panel is safe. Right, so they will inject an arc example based on 25 kA uh, one second. Right, so uh, there's in a way that they put the cotton materials around here to simulate that there's person there to see um, if they are being uh, hurt or can be injured. All right, so the purging uh, can be uh, upwards or downwards. You can see that here is an up purge, and this picture is a down purge, a down exhaust. Okay, so the one she's perched uh, to the upper, it can be to the side as well. So the, the different exhaust systems that's been in place. Okay, so the, very quickly next is that we're going to talk about the standards. All right, so these are the different standards of the IEC requirement the, for the switch gears and the, all the different components that they need to comply. Uh, I'll be sending this uh, back to you guys so that uh, you can refer what are the IEC requirements in here. But most importantly is that we'd like to go through the SPPG handbook. All right, so what I have here is the uh, 2019 version. So the SPPG handbook talks about the power grid requirements the, uh, in terms of the, for the uh, engineers where they actually apply for the electricity. All right, so the requirement for the HD connection, I think very common in Singapore is 22 kV. The 6.6 .6 kV are much more for the older network itself. So even when for 6.6 .6 kV uh, switch gear need to be replaced, commonly the vendors will replace with a 22 kV switch gear. So these are the different steps for the steps. They start with the extra high tension, so 230 kV, and then it goes downwards uh, from 66 kV right down to 22 and right down to LT. So LT we are talking about 400 volt to 230 volt itself. All right, so a key point in here uh, we take into consideration that is written in there for the power factor, uh, be it for the different steps is all at 0.85, right, which is the power factor. Um, he also talked about the um, short time we stand current rating for the switch gear. So the, um, I think key emphasis in here is the 25 kA three second for the short time we stand current rating. All right. So the, for 6.6 .6 kV as well as 20 kA for three second. All right. So the um, next is also talk about the uh, CT, the current transformer ratio of 500 slash 5. So 500 is the primary winding, 5 is the secondary winding. So they're basically converting from a 500M maximum to a 5M. All right, so here talks about VT uh, burden at 100 VA, which is sufficient the, as per the minimum requirement uh, indicated in here. So it's 100 PA. Okay, so this slide uh, can uh, cover a bit more. So the, this slide talks about the connection requirement for 22 kV, also a 6.6 .6 kV connection. So on the bottom left in here, we see there's a pilot wire connections. So you can see it's 500 slash 5. So the, in some of the design that we see in the market, some of the designers, they put 500 slash 300 slash 5. Uh, with this latest revision, there's no more 300 in here. So it's just purely 500 slash 5. Right, so on the notes on the right as well, uh, it also talks about the um, illustration of the pilot wires, the CTs, the, where they put emphasis into like the uh, knee point voltage, 
um, not exceeding 150 milliamp, etc. Now, if you come into the center portion as well, uh, they focus on the OCEF CTs. Likewise, is 500 slash 5. All right, so for the class P20, 50 BA, all right, all better. All right, so uh, yet again, there's no slash 300 indicated in here. Okay, so the, um, the factors for the OCEF is also been indicated, it's a portion. So all the uh, criteria of the OCF CTs, for uh, example, the uh, overcurrent relay IDMTL characteristics are all indicated in here. All right. So this is from the SPG handbook. All right. So uh, I've listed down some of the key requirements in terms of the re metering requirement. Metering current and voltage transformer are solely for power grid revenue metering. Metering kiosks provided close below 20 meters location of the CTs and BTs, standard requirements of the kiosk, metering CTs, and manufacturer test certificate to be submitted for SP power grid uh, testing. The metering BTs testing report accredited the testing laboratories and declaration letters also by the REW. And also next is that for the specifications of the BTs, 22, the slash 100 at BTs of 100 VA burden, which is VA uh, per phase, connected in star to star with L2 phase terminal uh, of the secondary winding. So the VT accuracy must have uh, of accuracy of class one, IEC 61869. The VT must be of the fuse type, COMCB at 6M, the 50 Hertz with breaking capacity of not less than 10 kA, cable of uh, cross connection up to 6 mm for terminal of the MCB, and also connect to the voltmeter, voltmeter and the power meter at 100 uh, milliamp fuse. Right. So the, um, here talks about the different steps of the CT ratio. So just take note a very quick one is that for a 500 uh, slash 300 slash 5 CTs, there's actually uh, much more small in size compared to the one at the CT ratio of the 50 slash 25 slash 5 ratio. Okay, so the, the, the size is actually vice versa. So uh, in terms of space planning, also price planning as well, um, that might want to take that into consideration because um, the larger size uh, C, CT usually are the more expensive one. All right, so here talks about the size of the call um, that's been indicated in here. So the, it's also dependent, the size to be used is actually depending on the load as well. So for example, like uh, 16, 23 KA, usually you use a 35 mm to call. All right, so you can refer to this chart in here. Okay, so, okay, so uh, very quickly, next is that we're gonna go through in some of how the switch gears start to get digitized. So the over in here, the reason why is because the, um, the customers are constantly looking for ways to reduce the um, downtime. Because the downtime the, from all the articles that we can see in here, the, um, it's actually caused a lot of the, um, financial loss for the customers itself, that depending on the sectors, right? And some of the sectors, like for instance, in healthcare, the um, downtime to them is very critical, so they try to to achieve a maximum uptime. And also here is some statistics from um, our Singapore uh, CDF report in here, and also from uh, AXA, that uh, power failure continue to be the number one losses, even for the insurance company. So from the statistic of tripping uh, of about 39%, all right, for the, of fire are caused by the, these uh, commercial buildings. All right, so the, um, these are some things that we have to look into as well. So apart from downtime, they are causing um, certain uh, fire hazard as well. So the, um, what causes the fire, especially when it comes to electrical equipment, the, um, in short is that it comes a lot from the loose joints. So the loose joints, the, once they start to loosen, they will start to form a hotspot. All right, so there's a few ways to resolve this. One is that you tighten it on a regular basis. 
and also you use a thermographic uh, inspection tools to monitor all the hot joints. The, um, the second thing is that when we um, refer to switch gears, uh, another concern is that whether this there is a leakage in the SF6 gas, because uh, the SF6 is um, used for insulating the components inside. So a right regular uh, monitoring uh, regime is needed to the manometers or the LEDs, which is called the IDIS, and also the circuit breaker health. All right, so after regular switching, or sometime when the breakers is uh, too old, the lifespan start to degrade due to wear and tear. All right, so you need certain diagnostic tools available to actually uh, monitor the health of the circuit breaker. All right, so all this, what happens is for Schneider, they have developed a solution which is a digitized switch gear that's able to give early alarm indication, not before it fails. All right, so way, way ahead before the problem takes place. All right, so the, this in a way helps to minimize um, shutdown, the, which is the beneficial from the owner itself. So how is it done? is that uh, we have this the thermal monitoring solution. They use the thermal sensors. All right, so it's self-powered wireless sensors. All right, so once it's been installed, it actually measures uh, 24 hours, seven days. So continuous monitoring. So the, what they are trying to detect is any possibility of a hotspot in the early stage. So this in a way, it prevents downtime. So these sensors, in a way, this has been self-powered. They use on a Zigbee transmission, 2.4 gigahertz. All right, it sends the signal into a gateway. All right, so the, literally all the joints within the switch gears, cable joints, or even for the transformer, the, um, we can actually install these uh, TH11, TH110 sensors, and then you transmit the, the information of any hotspots to the gateway. Uh, apart from this is that um, we also have other sensors the, to identify whether possibility of um, humidity because it will cause moisture. All right, so to prevent this whole process is to prevent condensation. All right, so these sensors also will be self-powered and it's 24-7 uh, as well. Okay, sorry, the, this one is that you actually have a, have a battery inside, not self-powered, say it wrong way. So, the, but the battery have a long lifespan, right? So you have about uh, 10 to 15 years lifespan in here. Okay, so the, the different points of the switch gear, we will actually install um, these uh, SF6, sorry, um, these uh, sensors into the SF6 uh, joints itself. So the, these are done, the joint, internal joints are actually done the, from the factory before it's been sent out. Only for the external joints, then they'll be done at site. Okay. All right, so the, once the whole the installation has been done with the, the sensors, the, literally we can basically the, bring the information the, into real-time monitoring. We can see the last operation, you can see the operating time, you can see the even the lifespan and the aging of the circuit breaker as well, All right? So in a way, the panel starts to become um, digitized for your switch gears, and then you start to communicate with the end users, All right? So this, in a way, uh, it also helps to bring certain benefits in terms of um, the operation expense is reduced, so it brings uh, reduce the maintenance cost as well, All right? So. The, apart from this, so we have the arc flash solution that's been installed using our Isergy um, P3 or P5 relay, which is embedded into the module. So just now we talk about the, um, the uh, potential of arc flash, uh, which is needed in the switch gear. So we also have the independent uh, VAM 3 to 1, right? So used as a master that combined with the different VAM series. So all these are our um, arc flash um, products that's available in our switch gear. All right, so here this picture just shows that it's in contact uh, with the bus bar. So this is how it actually works. So from the sensors, 
you actually goes um, into a gateway. And from the gateway, you can actually go into a controller. The controllers, what it does, can be monitored um, the, in terms of the sending information to your SM, to your phone via SMA, so via HMI. All right, and also you can see certain alarm trending on the HMI as well. All right, so the, for analytics to take place, um, the cloud, so the, you have a gateway in here, put in your also like a 4G SIM card, the information can be just transmitted into cloud. All right, so these are the key components in here. We also have a heat tech. Heat tech is like a, a heat detection, uh, also a smoke detection. So if there's a analytics inside, so that if certain of your cables have actually caught, uh, start to burst into uh, flames or, or smoke, the heat tech will be able to detect it as well. All right, so all this has integrated all right, into the IP backbone. And then you can see from a, a local monitoring and also you can see from a cloud-based monitoring as well. All right, so the, um, this is generally the different dashboards that is available. All right, so as you can see, the ran through the different sensors. It goes into a gateway and then it sends into cloud. And then from then on, uh, we have the um, data scientists as well to look into certain advisors, all right, that helps you to monitor the different panels. So if you have um, multiple sites, a lot of um, the different um, grades of panels to monitor. So all the data are accumulated on clouds and then it's been monitored 24-7. All right, so you can see the health report on your phone as well, also on emails. All right, so what it does, it gives you certain predictive analytics, right? So in a way, it's uh, except to risk management. Okay, so this is uh, example of the different dashboards. So for um, the operators to have a, like a dashboard view for them to understand and see where are the potential problem. So this helps to minimize their troubleshooting time as well. Okay. So I think with this, uh, I've come to an end of uh, today's session. Right. So I believe I've gone through the full 60 minutes. And also that we come to the last part, which is the Q&A session. So for the audience we have joined, um, if you have questions, uh, we have catered a 10 minute session for questions.